hi. I don't know if I'm posting this or not. Um, so sometimes I'm going to speak as if I am going to post this, but there's a high likelihood that I won't. So um, if I do end up posting this, um, quite often I'll just like, if I feel like I need to unpick something and I can't be asked to journal because I know it's going to be like a 10 page journal entry, I'll just voice record it. But then I thought it could kind of be an interesting podcast episode. So I thought I'd record it and maybe post it. So I'll try and keep it kind of PG. Anyway, um, I've been thinking recently about attention and like the need for attention and validation and like, I don't know if this will appeal to the men that listen to me because I'm going to be speaking about this from like a female's perspective and obviously that experience is going to be inherently different for men but I feel like recently I've kind of been trying to come to terms with the fact of like becoming comfortable with receiving attention or like becoming comfortable with with the mindset that I like receiving attention or feeling like I'm an attention seeker or like at what point is wanting attention unhealthy and you know where is it healthy and where do we need it and when is it too much and like what is the line between healthy attention and unhealthy attention and how do you know where you should be giving back when you're getting attention and You know, I just feel like it's a really complex topic because obviously a lot of the connotations surrounding attention are very negative and, you know, it's particularly used as a slur towards women or like she's an attention whore or she's an attention seeker. I'm just about to charge my phone, so I'm sorry if it makes a noise. Okay, I think it's fine. Um... Yeah, basically, I've just, I've been thinking, like, I like receiving attention. I like going out and getting attention from people. I like talking to new people. I like, like, I like when I make an effort and I feel like people acknowledge that effort. But then I almost feel like when I get ready in the morning, am I dressing up for random people that may or may not be there? Like, I'll give you an example and... Do you know, I really hope this doesn't come across as egoic because I'm trying to be really vulnerable here and, like, be honest because I just feel like this topic isn't discussed because it will probably paint me in a really bad light. And for people that do, like, do not empathise with me or, like, understand this, they're probably just going to be, like, you're really, like, weird. (laughs) Um, but I'm just trying to be honest because I feel like I've seen like little bits. I kind of had like a look on Reddit. I know that's kind of embarrassing, but I saw a lot of things on Reddit about a lot of people saying the same, but I just feel like it's not widely discussed. So I wanted to discuss it. So I went out today and I put on such a good fit and I went to the shops and there was like no one like... I don't even know how to explain it other than, like, my demographic. Like, do you know what, do you know what I mean by that? So, like, someone that you know would appreciate the outfit. It doesn't matter whether it's, like, a group of girls that, like, would get it or, like, you know, boys that are going to be, like, she looks fit. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, like, a group of people that would see, like, not group, but the type of people that would see it and be, like, oh, that's a good outfit. And obviously that is inherently attention seeking. Like I'm not dumb to that fact. And I remember walking back to my car and thinking to myself, like, I'm kind of disheartened that I didn't see anyone or like make eye contact with anyone that like kind of gave me what I felt like was the nod of approval. And like honestly, it was at that point where I was like, okay, maybe this is like kind of unhealthy because why am I sad that someone didn't validate how I felt about myself and I was thinking about it like I'm pretty I feel pretty secure in myself like I feel pretty confident in myself like I know I look nice when I go out like I'm not insecure in that sense like aesthetically so what am I looking for because a lot of people say that 
people that seek attention or people that want attention are insecure and they don't have the ability to give it to themselves so they try and get it externally but I feel like that doesn't apply to me and a lot of the things that I read online kind of seemed the same like it didn't seem to be people that were unaware of the fact that this was something that they were doing they knew you know maybe they had um like a difficult upbringing or they had like you know some some kind of thing in childhood where they lacked attention and I'm very aware of the fact that like as a child I lacked attention and I think that's obviously a common theme and like all these people were like I don't feel insecure I don't feel like unworthy but when I go out I want to get attention from people and I don't know why it is because I really pride myself on like not being like a surface level person and I know that's probably somewhat egoic in in nature to like put myself down to like if I'm surface level or not because you know if you're genuinely happy being surface level and that's like who you are that's great but I feel like why am I so focused on these aesthetic things and these like surface level things that really don't add anything to my life like it doesn't add anything to my actual existence if someone tells me they liked my outfit or if they think that I'm pretty and I've been journaling about this over the last few days because I've really been trying to like unpick it and the full moon's in a few days so I'm really trying to like you know maybe maybe on the full moon I'll have the like pinnacle moment and it'll all come to me but for right now I'm just very confused because I feel like is it just an innately female experience to constantly want to be observed like I wrote this down the other day and it's so sad. Like, it's so sad that I wrote this, but it was like the truest thing that I'd ever written. And it said, what is life if not to be observed or not to be perceived? One of the two, observed or perceived, basically the same. And I just realised that, like, I was putting down so much of the enjoyment I get from life out of the lens that other people may be viewing me through you know and I'm making an educated guess and do you know I think maybe a big part of this is like I'm really interested in like body language and facial expressions and like basically human behavior like I have a real I was gonna say kink not kink I have like a real um like flair for human behavior and like I really enjoy it and like I was saying to my mum the other day like the reason that I love reality tv so much is because I feel like it helps me understand obviously like having ADHD I don't have the same understanding of like just being neurodivergent you don't think about things or understand things the way that like regular people would and reality tv has always been a way that has helped me to unpack how normal people behave or what they want from a certain interaction that maybe when I was younger I didn't understand and it's been obviously obviously you know it that is just an attempt at me trying to mask and become a super high level masker which is weird because it it doesn't feel like masking like it's just like a special interest of mine it's just a shame that that special interest comes with masking at its core because I mean, I I feel I don't mask as much as I did before, but it's like I can see in people when... The thing is that you can't, like I can't, but I can make a very educated guess through, you know, most of the media that I've consumed over the last, like, 20 years of my life about what someone is thinking when they look at something. And I don't know why it's so interesting to me but I feel like I am the biggest test subject of like this theory. And so it's like, how do people react when I wear my hair like this? And what about when I do this? And what about when like I wear these clothes or like, you know, it's just interesting how different I'm perceived. I said to one of my friends the other day, I was basically talking to her about how um, I think I said, I might've said this in a podcast actually about how I don't want friends anymore who um, just, like... Have you ever, like, made friends with someone and they're just constantly complimenting you all the time and it's low-key, like, 
evil eye energy. Like, if you don't know what that means, like, uh, it's really prominent in a lot of religions as well, where compliments are often seen as a sign of the evil eye because they quite often can mean jealousy. And, like, I've had a fair few friends that I've had to chuck in the bin because, like, you know it starts off and they're like oh my god I like your clothes or I like your whatever blah 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 um and then all of a sudden it becomes resentment and then they you know start like picking on me for something like I went on holiday with this girl and I put on an outfit and she was like you look crazy we're only going for dinner and I was like girl we're in Brazil like (laughs) I'm gonna make an like when else am I gonna dress like this you know like And it was things like that. Like, I was like, why are you angry at me for making an effort for dinner? You know, like, you knew that I liked fashion when I became friends with you. Like, you can't then just now not want that. Like, and anyway, the point that I was making to my friend was that I don't want to be friends with people anymore that um, only, like, compliment me based on, um, like, surface level things And the way I described it was that, like, if I was homeless, would you still speak to me? Like, would you still be my friend? And do you know what's really fucking hypocritical about that? Is that I feel like I don't give homeless people enough of a chance. Like, and it's, it's, I'm such a fucking hypocrite in that sense, because that shows, you know, a level of judgment within myself as well. And this is where, like, what I mean when I say that these are, like, really introspective for me. These, like, I usually don't post these. I do these all the time. But um, because I have, like, realizations while I speak and then I'm like, fuck, I need to start speaking to the homeless. Um, But no, I just think, I just find, honestly, that, like, if, if you stripped it all back, like, would you still like me for who I am? Or do you just like me for the things that I can provide? And I was actually having a talk with someone today about why I, like, left um, the drum and bass, like, music scene. And I was saying, like, it got to the point where I feel like... I felt like people were only speaking to me because of what I could offer them or who I knew and, you know, who my connections were. And it was like, I'm not worthy if I'm not so-and-so's friend. If I'm not, you know, this DJ's friend... Or if I'm not dating this DJ, I'm not worthy. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's annoying to me that our worth is pinned to, like, statements or labels. And, like, when I did sociology in A-level, we learned about this thing called master status. And it really stuck with me. And it basically... um, We learned about it in the concept of, um, like, being a mother figure. So when you have a child, your master status becomes mum. Like, above above all, you are a mother. If the the king of England, he is above all the king. Like, that is his master status. That is the thing that defines him. And I've noticed that as a society, obviously not to the extreme of, you know, king, queen, whatever, but we assign ourselves these labels and they do fluctuate throughout our life. But I think we assign ourselves these labels of like you know even like the whole aesthetic craze like we assign words to things or like you know it sounds so stupid like I'm watching Love Island at the minute and I've noticed how they seem to follow this like strict formula of like closed off not closed off eggs in one basket eggs in you know multiple basket like to define how they're going to behave and they let these like preconceived words define how they think they should behave because they can't just do what they want and recently I've been trying really really hard to I've been working with like a really specific deity that's really focused on just like doing what what you want and like just living for you and it's so funny because doing what I want at the minute is getting attention and I've realized like I basically um, really tried to... Sorry, I have, like, two points in my head and I'm trying to, like, make them into one point. <laughs> it's really confusing. Um, but I've been trying really hard at the minute to just, like, do whatever the fuck I want and just, like, please myself because I think um, I can 
be quite restrictive and I can I set quite a lot of um I don't know what the words like the word is like not boundaries not that's not the right word but like um rules for myself like I hold myself to a pretty high standard for a lot of things purely because um ADHD and I won't get anything done and I know that if I set myself like rules I kind of morally like in my brain kind of have to abide by them and that's really it's really helpful for me and it's worked a lot but I've also found that sometimes I become like too regimented and that's why I've been trying to work with this deity because I want to like you know this deity represents just like you know being in ultimate alignment even if that's bad and that you know the worst things in your life are always going to be happening to benefit you and like things that don't seem right actually are right because they put you in a different position they put you somewhere that you needed to be you know like it's like kind of like burnt toast theory I don't know if you've heard of that you probably have it's like if you didn't burn your toast in the morning and then have to make a new one you wouldn't have missed the car crash like you know you missed that car crash the the universe was like looking out for you so that is that theory you know like you're always in the right place at the right time and I felt that when I was setting myself all of these rules and all of these like you know, I don't know, guidelines of how to live my life. It was kind of like stripping out the fun of it a little bit. And I felt like I wanted to, I'm, I'm, I struggle with balance as a person. I'm, I tend to fall on the extreme side of things most of the time, like zero or a hundred, you know, I struggle with like 50. That's kind of, the hardest place for me to, and I've been working on this for like a fair few years, you know, like it's been a theme for me for quite a while, but it's obviously like balance in every aspect of your life. Like there's so many aspects of your life to consider. And so I got, it's kind of like one at a time, but a definite one for me is, is like, you know, attention. And I feel like (laughs) so this is like kind of relevant, but today I went for a walk and where I live, I live down a lane. And when you come out of the lane, you can either walk on the right, which is the main road, or you can walk on the left, which is like the little lane. Um, so you're either walking where everyone can see you or where no one can see you. And it's so funny because I was like walking. So Basically, I get really nervous sometimes, like, walking past cars on tra- in traffic because it's, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's, like, a female experience, but probably it is for, like, all of the 12-year-old girls that used to get beeped at by, like, weird bricky men. Um, yeah, so I was walking on the busy side of the road and I was, like, walking around and walking around, la, 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 la having a great time, like, feeling, like, super hot and super sexy, like, really cool. And then literally, like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I was like, I don't want to be seen anymore. Like, I don't want to be seen anymore. And luckily, I'd got to, like, a part of my route where I could just, like, go on the other side of the road. And I walked home. And it was literally, like, my observer meter ran out. Like, I'd had enough of performing for the day. And I honestly feel like to be a girl, to be a woman in life is to perform. Like, to be a female is to put on this show and this display and I feel like I don't know like it's so draining but also it's what I live for like does that make sense I don't know like I don't know it's hard to put into words what I mean because this is still like very like a new concept to me that I'm trying to unpick in my head and I feel like it's in a very very tight knot And, like, this knot has been ingrained into me since, like, birth, you know? And I know that's just, like, the patriarchal society that we live in where these standards are set for us. You know, everything's kind of, like, you have to be within these certain perimeters of what is acceptable and what's not. And, like, you know, don't fall too far on either side. And I do think, like, one thing I have struggled with is knowing like how to fall within the correct lines and it's funny because 
I see all these videos on, on TikTok about how, like, pretty privileged and, like, as you get older um, and you kind of come into yourself. Because when I was younger, like, I didn't really, like, I don't know. I felt like people thought I was really weird and, like, a bit of a loser. Like, if you had ADHD or, like, autism or any kind of neurodivergence growing up as a child and you were, like, a bit ugly, oh, my God. It's like people could, like, smell it coming off of you. Like, I just feel like people knew that I didn't understand and they would kind of like take the piss out of that and it's kind of sad because I didn't know that they knew like that I was like it's it's so obvious like, I saw this video and it was this girl saying that like um no one even it was like no parent or teacher or um you know doctor will be able to tell you as a 12 year old girl that you're autistic but the most popular girl in school will like she'll know and it's so true because like why are they so mean like why were they so mean like why did they not like me like I tried so hard to make them like me and they still didn't like me and now they like me and why do they like me now because I learned to dress the only reason I learned to dress well is because I was trying to impress you does that like do you know what I mean like I'm like the only reason that I put this much effort into looking good and, like, I fucking learned how to blow dry my hair because all these popular girls in my school had, like, lovely, shiny, glossy, perfect hair and, like, I learned to do all of these things so I could be just like them. And, like, now that I look the part, everyone's like, you're so quirky and, like personality is so cool but like so is it just a visual thing because when I I wouldn't even say I was ugly I, I wasn't ugly but like when I was not like I don't know adhering to this I don't know Eurocentric patriarchal standard of beauty you thought I was weird but now you think it, I'm like different do you know what I mean like the amount of men who are like there's something different about you I can't put my finger on it and I'm like yes it's fucking ADHD like I don't it's the same thing that you hated me for 10 years ago and it's so it's such like a mind fuck and it's really really hard to navigate growing up because I feel like I'm still in that like awkward in between age where like I am an adult and I've been an adult for four years but also like 18 is not really an adult like I feel like I'm still, like, a, I'm, like, a teenage adult, you know? Like, I feel like maybe when I'm, like, 25, that's, like, proper adult adult, you know? And it's, it's so weird because I'm still so, like, indoctrinated from, like, the things that happened to me in school and, like, I'm sure everyone is. Like, this is a universal experience. But it's so strange to me because all I ever wanted was to just appeal to this, like, small niche group of people and now I actually think that those people are losers. Like, looking back on them now and, like, seeing them now, I just think, like, I don't think that you're that cool now. Like, you were only cool then because there was nothing cooler, you know? Maybe if I went to school in, like, LA, it would be different. Like, I went to school with, like, Nepo babies that had, like, really cool parents. Like, I went to school with a bunch of farm kids. Like... And at the time, I was like, oh, I need to go to a young farmer's event. Like, I need to go, like, get me on a tractor. Like, am I joking? Like, is that a joke? What the fuck? No, come on. Come off it. Like, no shame if that's, like, what you're into. But that is not what I'm into. And I was trying so hard to fit in. And I feel like, it's, I feel like, honestly, now, it is so glaringly obvious when someone's trying to fit in. Like, I can see it because I've been it like oh, I don't know if I'm sure someone listening to this will understand but when you're like having a conversation with someone and you can tell that they're trying to relate to you and I'm like oh this is painful like I used to do this like I used to do this and there's nothing worse than like I don't know for anyone who is like heavy on like working on themselves um this is something that happens to me all the time but I see, I'll, I'll be, I don't know, speaking to someone or like even someone I know, someone I'm like good friends with and 
they'll do something and it's like a behavior or, or a pattern that I've recently like maybe stepped out of so like a thing for me that I used to do was bragging like this is a really actually I can talk about this for a sec so I used to brag a lot about things because I felt like it made me sound more interesting I actually didn't realize it makes you sound like a fucking idiot and usually it makes you sound like a liar because no I didn't go to three house parties on the weekend why am I telling people that it's a lie I went to one of course I only went to one and it finished at half ten like do you know what I mean? Like, I just used to ex- exaggerate the truth. And um, I know someone who is, like, a very prolific exaggerator. And it's funny because everyone knows that this person highly exaggerates everything all the time. Like, it's it's a, a topic of discussion. And it's to the point where, like, they're quite often, like, not believed. and Or they'll tell me something and I'm like... They'll say it in a group scenario and I'll be like, well, it's not how you told me last week that that happened and it's funny because like obviously being like I've been in that situation and I know that it comes from a place of not feeling good enough and obviously as I've worked on myself and like my self-worth has become more I don't know heightened like I don't feel the need like I know that my life is fulfilling like I honestly would rather someone just think I was boring than know too much like there's certain things that I don't need to share saying that that's really ironic considering how much I share on here but there are certain things that I don't need to share and I don't feel the need to exaggerate and if anything sometimes now like honestly I remember this girl saying to me once in school she was like you always think that you have the inside scoop on things or that you know more about something than other people and it really stuck with me and like kind of hit a nerve and like looking back now I can see that it hit a nerve because it made me like the point of that was that I wanted to appear that I knew more than other people because actually I knew nothing like I was trying to make up for the fact that I was so out of the loop and I was so unaware of what was going on because like the the place that I came from was so like not I wasn't informed on things I didn't know about you know pop culture I didn't know about like, I didn't have, like, a brother or a sister in the older years to know what was going on, and I didn't have, like, do you know what I mean? I didn't have that, so I was trying to overcompensate. And with the exaggerating, like, I don't know why I said it like that. With the exaggerating, I was just trying to make myself seem like someone worthy of the person I'm talking to's time. And I notice that in other people quite a lot now. Like, I can tell when someone's... I met this guy, (laughs) like, a few months ago, and he was just sat at the table I was at at the pub and it just everything that was coming out of his mouth was like name dropping flexing like constant and I was like trying not to laugh at him but obviously like not I wasn't being mean but I was just like I literally can't listen to this like this is crazy like and you just think you're hearing stuff but then I think you know give it a like give it a rest because I used to do the exact same probably way worse it's just and it's so hard because like I feel like the more aware of yourself you become the more aware of other people you become and then you th- you just cringe and you just think oh I'm so cringe and I have this with my podcast all the time like quite often I'll listen to podcasts that I posted like two years ago and I'll be like ew and I'll delete it because I think I just sound like a fucking idiot like I sound horrendous I'm like what am I talking about? Why am I trying to be funny? Like, some of the things I say, and and I ha- half the stuff I say, I don't stand by anymore. Like, that philosophy is outdated because I change my philosophy every day. I change my philosophy like, literally more than I change my socks. Honestly, it's like every single day I have a new belief system because, I don't know, I just like, I take in so much and then I'm, I'm constantly, I can't believe it all. So I kind of, you know, one one week I'll believe one thing and then the next week it'll have changed into a different belief that kind of discards the previous belief. So I listen to these old podcasts and I just, I'm like, oh, I don't stand by that. So I try not to judge, like, when I, other people, like, have you ever met someone that's just like, you're like, you're fucking horrible. Like, you are horrible. You are the worst person ever. And I realised I was doing that a lot this year with Love Island. Um, and... I had, like, a bit of a realisation the other day that I need to, like, just shut the fuck up because 
literally within a week, my perceptions on all these people have changed so drastically. And it just makes you think, like, you meet someone one time and you make this perception of them. And then, you know, the more time you spend with them, you're like, oh, you're actually not like that at all. Like, that was just a, a quick judgment. And then it makes me think, you know, like, these people that see me on the streets and I'm, like, vying for their attention. But they've just made a quick judgment of me that is probably nowhere near accurate to what what is actually like going on what I'm actually trying to represent like I think I was talking about this before but like the, the filter thing like everyone has like a lens over their eye and like you know everyone's trauma or everyone's life experiences everyone's where they come from their background their origin story like paints the lens a different color so that's why to some people red flags don't appear red like you know, if you grew up in a house where everyone shouts and then you get a boyfriend that shouts at you all the time, you're not going to think anything of it because that's your normal. To me, when someone shouts at me, I curl up into a ball and don't talk to them for three days because my mum prefers to communicate with me. She's like, I don't think I've ever heard her shout at me, ever. I don't think I've ever heard her shout at anyone. But my dad, however, loves to bloody shout and he's so scary, like, it so scares me so much, like, because I'm just not used to it, like, I didn't grow up in that environment, and it's like, ah, like, why are you shouting at me for, and then other people just think, like, it's normal, and, or, like, I'll do something, and then someone's like, why are you doing that, like, I find that with, like, my communication, like, I'll be communicating about something, and then someone's like, I don't want to talk about that, or, like, what, oh, like, and they see that as, like, a threat, or, like, a, you know, an argument, or a confrontation, and I'm like, no, this is just like, I'm just talking to you. And it's just like, we were all wired so differently. And I think that's why a lot of people like don't get on or do get on and blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of straying off the point of what I was trying to make. But so I feel like maybe like, you know, it's just, this is, this is the thing. And my therapist says this to me all the time. She's like, you're so aware of everything that's going on. And it's like, yeah, I'm so aware. And I understand it. But like, why am I still experiencing it? Because I am so aware of the fact that when I'm being perceived on the street by these random people and I want their validation, I don't know how they're validating me. For a start, I don't know how they're validating me unless they literally come up to me and say, I really like your outfit. I can tell you put a lot of time and effort into that, which they never do. I'm just inferring from what I've learned on TV and magazines and TikTok and like any kind of socialization books I've read and also secondly I might be wrong like I'm pretty sure me watching a few body language videos on TikTok isn't doesn't have me like a mass of qualification in reading people like I can just know instantly like what they're thinking but I think I can but I can't. So it's kind of pointless. It's like, I'm going out and I'm doing all this for what? Like an, an educated guess. Like, and then, and then to, to let my emotions ride on the fact that they may or may not give me like a, a nod of approval. Is that a joke? It's embarrassing, quite frankly. But I know that it's just like part of the female experience. Like, I'm aware of this. Like, this is... Maybe I have it on a more bit of a more extreme. I honestly think that my inner child genuinely, all she wants is just to appear cool to the cool kids. Like, like anyone who, I really hope no one from my school is listening. I don't think they do listen to this. But if anyone from my school is listening to this, literally all my inner child want, wanted is to just like appear cool to you. That's it. And I think, obviously, because obviously, like, the reason that... I don't know if I've really spoken about this much, but when you're angry or when you're, like, stressed or when you're... Anytime you're triggered, basically, it triggers your inner child. And your inner child's kind of always there because it's, like, the way that you primarily learn to socialise. So that's why when a lot of people get angry, they behave like children because it's, like, their inner child comes out. Um... So, yeah, triggering is is like a, a, a point in your life when you were a child, you were wounded and a lot of people don't know how to like effectively 
um, manage their emotions or like um, bring like emotional because emotions are just energy in your body that's like all it is like energy in motion is an emotion you know um, so it's like when someone says I like your energy they're just saying like I like the emotion that you're giving off right now I saw that in a TikTok the other day credits to her it's really interesting um so you know when you're experiencing this you know emotion as a child say for example someone calls you ugly when you're a child and it hurts you and you know how like as kids like kids do that thing where they like cry like when kids have tantrums they fucking go for it like they're like running around like storming like tapping their face like stamping on the floor that's um like a physiological um emotional release so i think a lot of animals if they're being chased by their predators afterwards they'll like run away and then if they survive they'll just go into a ball and just shake for like half an hour basically it's the equivalent of having a tantrum um it's to release that blockage so that you don't have that anymore like holding you back however we have grown up in a society that teaches children that that is misbehaving and that having these you know tantrums or these like huge displays of emotion is bad behavior or bratty and you know we're taught don't do that we're punished for it therefore there's all these adults roaming around with years and years and years of emotional blockages that we have like unlearned how to release because it's built into our hardware like it's built into our dna to be able to do that like why do you think kids just like do that out of nowhere not just doing it for no reason are they but so basically we've got all these blockages and then when you're an adult and a similar thing happens someone. I don't know, someone doesn't, it doesn't have to be, like, as direct as someone's, like, you're ugly, but, like, someone can make a comment that makes you feel ugly, because, as my therapist says, we do not use, um, you statements, we use I statements, so it's not, like, you made me feel ugly, it's, like, I felt ugly when you said that to me, and it triggers that wound, and if you think about the way that you behaved, like, a really good way to deal with, like, um, when you're triggered, is think think back to the earliest possible memory you have of feeling that emotion. Usually it'll pop to you because it's like begging to be released out of your body. Um, and think about it and think about how it made you feel. And then, <laughs> I know this sounds really horrible, but like th- think about the worst thing that could have happened in that moment. Like, make it as bad as it possibly can. And, like, if you cry, you cry. That's getting the energy out. Like, it's bringing it out of you. Like, you can, like, oh, you can get angry. You can shake. Like, you can just, anything. You can journal it. You can whatever. Just, like, get it out of you. If you need to speak about it, speak about it. If you need to, like, like, I'm a very verbal person. Like, I tend to speak out my things. Like, obviously I have a fucking podcast but like I usually like I'll journal them as well or like I find as well when I go like um raving I used to do this a lot it's really really helpful um you can like stomp it out like I know it sounds silly but like you can like it's 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 like a known thing um dancing's really good for energy release so yeah that is the way that you get rid of it and basically then after that after that you have to like wait to be re-triggered and then notice if it hurts you as much and if it does um just keep like bring yourself back to that moment and the more and the more you go through it it will just stop hurting you because I remember when I, was, when I started going to therapy there was a, there's one thing in my childhood that to me was like the most shameful thing that I had ever done like it was such a like a, a I was like, I will never tell her this. Like, I will never tell her this. This will never come out. Like, this is like, I keep the secret until my grave. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed um, to, like, even think this, that I did this. And now I don't even care. Like, it's not even something that I even, like, I'm like, yeah, I did that. But, like, I know why I did that. And, like, I've dealt with it. Like, it doesn't bother me. And that was, like, the most heavy thing on my heart. Like, 
no, I've been going to therapy for maybe like a year. So honestly, like it obviously it takes a bit of time, but it's a really, really beneficial thing to do because when you're not carrying like guilt and shame and like, you know, all of these things that make you feel weighed down, you just have so much more room for like light and compassion and empathy and like, you know, just like high vibrational emotions that just make you feel better in your day-to-day life. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of done talking, to be honest. I know that's kind of a mix of two topics, but yeah, it's difficult because I think I am going to post this, but it's difficult because obviously I'm like trying to come to some kind of like realization about wanting attention and a lot of a lot of the websites that I was reading up about just said you'll just grow out of it and like you know it's like I'm I was obviously just saying like working with that deity and she's just like do what you want and it's like is that what I want or is that what I feel I lack so I'm trying to make up for it because I don't just want to do something because it's what I lack you know I want to do something because it's right for me or does that make sense like I feel like if if you want to do something, you shouldn't be doing it to gain a reaction from anyone else. Because then that just makes me just as bad as all the times that I was saying, you know, I don't want friends that are using me for a certain thing. Like, I'm looking for reactions to someone. I'm using them to for a certain thing, I'm using them to, like, give me this, like, ego boost that I really don't feel I need, like, I don't feel I need this ego boost, but some, I'm, like, I must do, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet, but I'll, I'll keep going, maybe this will be, like, a two-part, and maybe, like, next time I'll figure it out, but I, I want to get to the bottom of this, I feel like it's, like, a deep, a deep-rooted issue in the female experience, like, I know that this is a universal experience for probably most women and young girls. And it's really hard to understand because it's literally... I honestly think it's just part of our culture. And we, as a society, struggle with introspection. So I'm going to try and try and unpick it and help us all. Thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate it. I will speak to you soon.